came. Hey, 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 welcome to the semi-finals, everybody! Yay! <laughs> well, we are here, you all know what it's about. We have two designers about to come on and pitch their ideas for this brief. We've got a new guest. We're going to see what they're thinking about. You all know the go, but basically semi-finals, whoever goes through to the final, they get a ticket three-day pass to uh, the learning conference going to be epic we've got some really special speakers while i'm telling you about one of the speakers open up a little tab go to the learning conference dot online click that button in the middle that says get tickets get them now you won't regret it but we've got a cool one uh richard goring richard mm. goring is going to do basically how to like create how to be an awesome animator but using powerpoint and i think this is cool because you don't need to have a wham bam solution like you can PowerPoint has a lot of potential and I think you know it captures attention using things like animation he's going to tell you how to bring movement and creativity into your PowerPoint in a non-tacky way and then also export it out as things like html uh, video gifs so I think from a practical perspective it's going to be awesome I've watched some of the videos on YouTube and stuff so I'm excited about his session which is going to be happening what have you got yeah. to say on that Kath, any perspectives? Because you've got you're more familiar. Yeah, so Bright Carbon, I really like. Uh, apart from the fact that they're from Manchester, you know, which we've well, oh, a bit from. of bias there. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, and I've seen Richard present at uh, Devlin, and he just is great. And he's going to go through a lot of the just. He's, he's going to give loads of great tips on how to do really great animation. And I know people are going to go, yeah, but PowerPoint, I'll tell you what, PowerPoint is a really, really powerful tool. And um, I think you're going to get a lot from the session. So I love Bright Carbon's, um, their tutorials. They do a lot of free mm -hmm. stuff. So, yeah, I think you guys are in for a treat. Very cool. All right. Well, let's get into the show. Let's see who our guest is. Kath, I know you're a fan, so I'm going to let you introduce Hang on, I've got a sound guest. effect that's every time that I'm going to set, speak to him, I'm going to do this. Oh. Okay, well, let's see who the superstar is. Whoa. <laughs> that's cool. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh. I'm so excited. Zolt, Jolt. I am a Uber fan. An Uber fan. I've known you. Oh, 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 I've known about you. I'm a creepy weirdo that's probably stalked you for years and you don't know who I am. But I've just loved the stuff you've been doing for years. So, yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I deserve all these sounds, though. It sounds like a fairy tale. Oh. Oh. You seem to be in a fairy tale cave. Um, so I think the theme of the show is all coming together very well. <laughs> um, love to be on the show. Excited to um, see what we can do here. And um, and again, like we're far, far away. I'm all the way from from Philadelphia, but this world is small. So I'm sure we'll meet again very, very soon. You have I'm it sure. far, far away in a land far, far away. In Jolfus. a fairy tale under yeah. the sky. <laughs> All right. Well, let me take yourself Jolfus, and also our audience through the brief so that you know <laughs> what our participants needed to do. So we had absolutely. Bob. Okay. Bob runs, he's the HR manager of a supermarket chain called Fresh. And he sent an email to the participants. And he said, we need some help with our policies. So basically they need help to communicate their policies at Fresh. They've been trying to build a course called HR Assist, um, which gives learners a high level breakdown of each policy. However, by the time they get the content ready, new changes come through and the process has become never ending. They're on revision 17. Ugh. Uh, they need some fresh eyes who can give an idea of a better way to deliver the content. 
They've discussed the idea of a chatbot or even a voice activated solution, which could work well for them, but they're just not sure. So they need something that is easy for them to update and make changes. They're not sure what the budget for something like this would be, but they want an estimate. They want to have a perspective of some expert that they can then bring to their management team to help move forward on the project. Now, the details that they've been told about is it must be a digital solution and that Fresh, the supermarket chain, they use Microsoft 365. They have 174 supermarkets across the nation, 50 to 85 staff on the roster in each of their stores. Their staff are aged 17 to 60. They do not need to track this for compliance reasons. reasons. Um, and basically the criteria that we are looking for is does it meet the brief? What are we thinking of the instructional design approach? And how is the budget? And this is basically meant to be a just-in-time solution. So let's have a look at our first participant. I do have a funny fact about them uh, that we can get to learn. And what I'll just say is here we've put an image up of what we think, because we've made it up, fresh supermarket looks like. Um, so it looks kind of modern and funky, you know, a bit whole food foodsy maybe. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get into it. Well, oh, here we go. Troublemaker Emma Pawson <laughs> All from right. Wales my... from is a Wales. learning designer. And um, yeah, go on. What Didn't did you, you learn did some Emma... Welsh? Didn't you learn some Welsh that you, I see you talking to her in it? Have you got uh, something you can say to Emma? I, I don't remember any Welsh words. I'll maybe do a search while we're... You might not be able Emma's to pronounce proposal. it. Oh, right, it's a bit right. hard. I'll buy some time for you. <laughs> yeah. Now, one of the questions that we asked, so we've got a profile, you can go to the middle of the note and you can see the answers to some of the questions that we asked the semi-finalist. This is like, like, what's been your biggest learning so far from participating in the show? Who do you want to go against in the final? Um, what's been your favourite challenge and why? If you won the tournament, where would you put your trophy and what would your acceptance speech say? So let's find out. Emma has said her favourite challenge so far was actually round one, the very first one. And the reason is because she experimented with Adobe XD and that was the first time that she'd done it. She also really loved that one. We obviously had about 64 participants, so she liked how er, learning how everyone else interpreted the brief. If she won the tournament, she would put hers on her imaginary mantelpiece above her imaginary fireplace. <laughs> nah, joke. She just put it on her desk. Oh, you're very funny, Emma. Very funny indeed. All right, let's yeah. see what she has come up with. Okie dokie. Let's uh, check out her solution. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, so let's get stuck in. My solution is a Microsoft chatbot solution called Power Virtual Assistant. The benefits of using a system that's already created by Microsoft is that you at Fresh already have Microsoft 365 installed. Integrations from the same provider always integrate much nicer. Okay, so there are a plethora of different integrations. However, I will focus on two today. And um, so as you see on the screen here, it is integrated really seamlessly with Teams. And um, so stuff that your staff members are used to using all the time, they can chat with the bot via their phone or the desktop, locating the information that you want to give them at any time whenever they need it on the shop floor, for example, or at home if they're um, doing some learning there. So how does this chatbot get this information? So not only can you program it manually using a really simple user interface provided by, by Microsoft, you can also automate it, which is such a cool feature. If you have your policy stored on SharePoint, for example, um, you can, oh, which brings me, I guess, to my second in, um, integration, which is SharePoint, and um, your policies are hosted on the web. So if you're updating them live, then that feeds automatically to the chatbot, which means the information is accurate at all times. The language use of the chatbot is really conversational, so it, your staff members can relate to it. 
the information that's provided to them is accurate, like I say, and also the, there are analytics that you can extract from, from the chatbot to see what questions your staff members are ask, asking regularly or things that the chatbot may or may not be able to answer. Second to this, I do recommend that there's a social learning aspect added onto your chatbot solution. This is also use, utilizing the Teams um, features such as using emojis or giving praise. The praise for things like well done for accessing the new chatbot or well done for applying the information from policies onto, on the floor during your role. And it also gives that, fosters that collaborative behavior between your teams. There can be knowledge checkpoints or polls so the learner can apply the information that they have retrieved from the chatbot. And lastly, if there is um, no answer that the chatbot can provide, the human assistance button is available to them, which will redirect them to a policy champion or someone who's an expert in that field. And on the right hand side here, you'll see some pricing options. They do vary between 30 and $75,000. This is Australian dollars. And there's a very detailed, comprehensive explanation included in this document. However, if you do want to reach out to ask me any questions, please feel free. Thank you. Bye. Okay, guys, what did you think of what Emma has proposed? Uh, I'll go quickly and then I'll throw to you, Kath, is um, yeah. I think from a, I, it seems what I love and we've seen this successfully done throughout the other episodes is where mm. you go to where the learners are. Um, yeah. So you're going to them in the stores, you're using tools they're already familiar with because it's just integrated in Fresh's way of existence. They've got Microsoft 365 <clears throat> using. You're not trying to get them to learn a whole new tool. Um, I think there's that familiarity. There's a lot of, it's easier to update stuff. Um, conversational language, that's actually really cool. I was speaking to Myra, who's one of our speakers at the conference actually. And she was yeah. talking about the importance of, there's a difference between writing scripts for narration video and mm. scripts for things like a chatbot and uh, like an Alexa skill and her session is on the Alexa skill. So she was giving me a demo of that. And she was just talking about the nuances of making a chatbot conversational and how that differs from how we're used to writing learning. So that's just something mm -hmm. to keep in mind. You might want to Google and research it yourself, but I'm looking forward to that session. Um, and then I'd say, Emma, I think I really like that you gave the two price options. And I even like that you said the whiz bam. I think that just shows a bit of your personality. I like doing that myself. I might just say, don't bold your price. Don't try and draw too much attention to it. Everything in your proposal is of equal value to your client. Otherwise it shouldn't be in there. Um, remember to, you had Australian dollars, goods and services tax. Is it inclusive or um, exclusive? And I like that you're including post support and you mentioned a social learning campaign. So that, that's just my takeaways. Um, I feel good about it. Kath, what do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it made a lot of sense. For me, this solution makes a lot of sense that uh, she's gone to Microsoft Teams, which I know has a really great into integration. Um, the the chatbot, uh, trying to think, there's a number of companies that have integrated um, the I actually can't remember it now. It's on the tip of my tongue. But whatever it's called, they've integrated it into Microsoft Teams and it's um, not used it myself. But this looked really, really good. Um, I liked her description. Mm -hmm. I liked how she's kind of, first of all, talked about the chatbot. Then she's talked about how it can be supported by the social learning and on the next screen, I like that she's given some different price ranges as well. I liked her explanation of how the information will be automatically updated with SharePoint, which is, again, another Microsoft tool. And I must say, I'm not really in the Microsoft ecosystem, so I don't understand it 100%. But, um, yeah, overall, I thought it was really good. I mean, I, I think it is it is it um, Schultz. I don't, I don't know if you know, but is it like Yammer Microsoft Teams? 
Um, so Teams is actually very popular. Um, they use it skyrocketed this year uh, with the COVID and working from home. And this is basically a collaboration platform um, built on SharePoint, but it doesn't look like SharePoint anymore. It's there have channels and conversations. It's like the uh, of the Slack version of the corporate world. Mm, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. What well, did you think of Emma's? Oh, sorry, you go, Kat. No, I was I was just gonna just literally gonna say it. It made sense to me um, having it in. A system that's already there so it probably would be quite easy for them to access this as far as finding the information anyway enough from me i'll let Charles. Cool. sure um i agree with a lot <clears throat> what you were saying so first of all there was a good listening um presented because uh just look at the brief uh there were key points in there the updates that needed to happen and by the time they create some kind of a course it's too late so the way that they i think uh, I think Emma approached it of getting as close as they can to the just-in-time system where they need that. Um, that was a great um, solution for that. They're already using Teams, and I'm sure they have all kinds of uh, Teams uh, and channels set up. So this way, this is just another way of just asking for, it's like basically asking a colleague about, hey, where is the um, the document? So I like that part. Um, I also like the fact that um, if, and I don't know where these things are share points or not, but if not, maybe a migration would be part of it. But as long as they, um, it connected to Microsoft, um, then documents itself updated, get notifications. Because one thing is, um, is having a chatbot, but not knowing when it's updated, that's basically not really helpful. Mm. Um, so I think those two was point was great. Um, the add-ons and all kinds of things on the second side that I think it's a great explanation about the context of where you can take it. I like the two options because you always want to make sure that that you have some kind of a scale. Sometimes people do two options. Sometimes they have a base and then they have like an a la carte. That's another way to approach that. Like you can have this and then all the little things if you want, you can make basically choose. And if you do that, then it's going to be easier than between between two um, numbers. But overall, I think it's a it's a, a great solution for a just in time um, conversation. And again, I agree, Kim, that the, the crucial point is how do you create the chatbot? So it doesn't sound like you're talking to a robot because people That's don't right. want to do that. Yeah. 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 Great points. Great points. I've, um, I've got another point that I just very quickly wanted to bring up. And yeah. I felt like with this integration, there is obviously a focus on HR because it's HR Assist. Mm -hmm. But looking at the chatbot, what I like is if they got their head around it, there'd actually be an opportunity to expand this um, into, you know, different. So, so if they got their head around this and understanding on how, how understanding how uh, the chatbot works, the sky's yeah. the limit for this chatbot. So as they get <clears throat> more comfortable with it, they can start adding on, it could be an assist, an assistant for the staff out there in different departments so it could be that um staff can then access this to find out information about stock rotation or i'm just i'm just suggesting that i think this model can be can grow um yep. with the company um and uh i i like i like that i like That's that cool. yeah yeah um, one, just before... Can I have one more quick thing yeah. before we move mm -hmm. on? Just remind yeah. me as, because um, I think there was mention in some high, Emma mentioned something around that they can actually monitor this or what's happening and see what the questions are. Mm. And that is a great point for collecting data. So mm. if the question being asked over and over and over again, that they can take that as HR and then they, you know, they can have like other channels to, to, to provide that, but they know what's happening and what people are asking about rather than just randomly it's, picking yeah. out those, those elements. Brilliant point. Yeah, brilliant we've, point. we've been talking um, quite a lot about that, Joel. The the AI in the background is so powerful that it really gives triggers to people, even when people ask a question that isn't that they haven't thought of. That data is in the back end that they can kind of go, okay, well, th there's obviously a gap here. 
we'll make sure we integrate that into the system. So, yeah, yeah it's, um, that's cool. I thought, um, I thought this was really good. I do need to bring to attention, we've spoken about this in previous episodes, non-conforming. So for the voters at home, you need to pay attention. We were looking for a one-page brief. I think this is two or three, so you can make the decision. <laughs> the dramatic decision of how you want to rate that particular criteria on if it met the brief. Um, because we have spoken, like there are clients out there, the minute you go outside their rules, they will disqualify you and we'll leave that up to the voters. So let's have a look at our next contestant. Okay. Our next contestant, our final contestant of this round is the lovely Shirlene, and she's an e-learning instructional designer at New South Wales Customer Service. We had all Aussies. Well, actually, well, Emma's, Emma's Welsh. Well, well, she lives here now. For many she years. lives here now. So we're all <laughs> living in Australia. So it's like we set this whole thing up, but we didn't. <laughs> um, People have voted. Uh, so what, what, have I got? what she, did she put? Didn't she put something about you had a very cute laugh? Oh, she's... Oh, we leave those personal comments out. Oh, yeah, yes. sorry. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> she... Um, <laughs> Uh, I just love the answer to this question. If you got to the final, which other competitor would you want to go against and why? And she said, I'd rather not choose one. Emma, uh -huh. Amanda and Troy are fierce competitors. Let's see what happens. I think that's just gorgeous reflection of who she is. And um, let's have a look. What'd she say about uh, what's been her biggest learning so far from participating on the show? In the beginning, I learned that the e-learning solution is not bound within authoring tools. When I learned that, I felt so much freedom and it became much more fascinating to create digital learning solutions. Then I realized how big the e-learning industry is and there is still so much to learn. Lately, I realized that I have to create my own opportunities. Once the competition is over, I want to create my own program and to continue pushing myself. I think that's cool. You know, um... I think that Shirlene's submissions, like just watching every submission, Shirlene's have been so polished and so great. I mean, Joel, if you if you get a chance, go in and have a look on her profile page at her, her submissions. They have all been, well, everyone's have, haven't they? But there's something about Shirlene's that I, I just think she's a, fantastic uh and it's designer. just it shows the yeah skill set so she's got a ui user interface design mm. kind of background so they're yeah. the kind of things the youtube videos you should be watching at home and looking at you know to upskill yourself it's not just instructional design it's not just development our worlds are all melding together but they, but mm. they've done a great job though haven't they all the submissions you've seen how people have learned to use different tools and mm -hmm. Even through just their feedback, they've told us how they've, um, you know, what they've been enjoying learning and, and using. Anyway, enough of me. Shut up, Kath. Let's have a look at what she's submitted. Hi, Bob. I will be presenting my solution for your needs today. So based on your brief, Fresh Supermarket needs to create a high-level HR policy learning for all your team members. The solution doesn't need to be tracked however needs to be easily adaptable because the content is constantly changing but before we get into my solution let's talk about chatbot and the voice activated solution that you mentioned i think those were a great idea however it might not be a suitable solution for this need chatbot is a machine learning technology this means an engineer must spend time to train the algorithm with keywords for it to be able to answer question if the content is constantly changing we need to retrain the machine again as for the voice activated solution from my experience with google home or silly siri this technology is not ready yet for complicated questions Similarly to chatbot, it also suffers from constant retraining. The solution I think is close to your needs would be using Glide app. Glide app allows you to make an app from a Google Sheet content. However, if you want to use Microsoft Excel, there is an option to use Zapier integration. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you the mock-up that I've done with Glide app. So you can easily share this app using QR code or link. If you use the link on a browser, it will look like this. If you scan the QR code on your phone, it will open up a browser on your mobile and ask you to save the app to your homepage with no download required. So all time member will be provided a password for first time entry. Once they sign in, it's very simple. They have an introduction page. They can also see the menu to the HR policy and they see a high level description on each policy. And they can click on it for further details. They can also contact the HR manager to ask question or escalating a situation. And that's it, every time you make changes in your Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel, the content will be automatically updated. Now let's talk about budget. So Glide App Pro costs about 41 Australian dollar per month. And Zapier pricing is ranging from zero dollars to 35 Australian dollar per month. But this is optional if you want to integrate your Microsoft Excel. Last but not least, the design development estimate cost is $10,000. And so that's it. Hope that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, guys. So what did you think of this submission? You go, Jolt. Um, so one thing uh, I want to mention that calling Bob by name, I love that because every person wants to hear their own name, the most important mm -hmm. things in the world. So I love, I love how Sherlyn started out the introduction. Um, and then also explaining why she's proposing something else than has been discussed before. I think it's mm. great showing that it's not just a completely ignored um, what yeah. they was discussing before, but here's a better solution and here's why. So I like that transition. Um, I love Glide app. Um, my, my daughter actually going to college and I building one a little app for her. Um, so this is a, a great approach for, um, especially if people are using phones and you're on the shop and walking around, they don't have a computer, anytime they can bring it up. Um, and, and the UI, the whole experience is, is exactly like an app. People know they, they're using their phone, so they get used to that. Um, I love the fact that she can also put a little bit more information and colorize it. And it's less about the fact that I do need to get there, but I almost like, well, I love the whole interface. Um, it's colorful, it's less policy-like, like a you know, bunch of links. Mm. Um, it actually looks like I wanna know more about it. I love that part. Um, presentation, I think at the end of the price, um, it's good to include all of that. Um, Zapier is, um, I'm not sure how Bob would much know about Zapier. It would be probably a little bit more explanation of what that is. Um, and there's um, also, just like the previous solution, there's a lot to build on here. So it could be a baseline of let's do a pilot, bring this live and then see how people are using it and then expand it to Zapier can make do magic, actually connect with anything else that they have, mm -hmm. including Microsoft 365. That's a really good point. I like it. Good breakdown. I feel like you've stolen a lot of my points. So yeah that was really cool um i think i love that she pointed out um the intricacies of some of the technologies where she's actually demonstrated that she's a, she's played with these tools before mm -hmm. and the technology is not quite there for where she wants it to be for the client so that it serves them to the best of what they need it for i think that's really cool before you ever go and propose a solution try and at least have either a buffer for work it out time in the project or have a play to know what its capabilities are. I think mm -hmm. she mentioned something around the no, you don't need to download. And I think from a client perspective, that's brilliant because a lot of pushback I hear in with my clients is, you know, oh, we'll let people use their own devices, but employees don't want to use their own internet or their own devices for work purposes. And a lot of time they want an allowance or they want um, some reimbursement if they have to do that. So saying that you don't need to download it um, is kind of that peace of mind for the client where they do get that pushback. 
And I think that the part of the solution where you can contact the HR person, I thought that was really cool. Just go straight to them, ask your question. Um, it breaks down that barrier of us and them and HR is the police sort of space. It just makes it like you're here to help me, help assist, like HR assist. I can just go directly to them. So, yeah, I liked it, Shirlene. Thank you. Kath? Well, I loved the aesthetic of this. Uh, she's used characters instead of using um, images. So this is the first one that we've seen using characters. We, we saw the um, submissions from the previous episode. I could actually really see a client jumping all over this, you know, as far as um, she's she's gone in, she's actually shown a little bit of a live example um so so it's not just oh you know um so she's gone above and beyond with the mock-up um you see i like glide as well joel we've we've um been doing we've had a number of submissions through the show using glide and i think that you know well all the submissions that we've had have, have would have instant updates as far as they update the the document but you know, the Google Sheet, the fact that they can, they don't even need to think about, for example, if we think about Emma's, don't even need to think about how am I going to write this script? You know, it's literally just updating content in that Google Sheet mm -hmm. and voila, that's it. Um, it is searchable as well. That's really good. So if someone needs to know a specific thing, they can jump right in there. And yeah, really just covering your points. I agree that Zapier is an integration that could have been explained a little bit better to Bob because um, you don't want to overwhelm them. It can kind of be explained. Zapier is a tool that's going to connect different things, but that's something that you won't need to worry about once that's set up. You know, mm. it'll just be an ongoing cost. So there's ways that we can explain things um, without freaking them out, you know. Yeah. Um, like but it. other than that, I really liked it. I thought it was potentially quoted a little bit low. I might charge more than this for that solution. You're, you're smiling as well, Jolt. So what's your, what's your thoughts on that? Because it is Glide app. It is, it is um, fairly simple, but I, I think Glide is bloody polished solution for, for most companies if they went and they used a, a glide app i'll tell you externally companies are charging you know 30 odd thousand for an app that wouldn't be any different or, or better than glide and they'd have you by the balls because they'd be the ones saying we need to do updates instead of it being so transparent so mm -hmm. That would be my feedback. What do you reckon, Schultz? Yeah, I think I don't know as much about the prices because this first of all is Australian. Um, mm -hmm. so it's slightly different than what we have in the US. But um, it all depends on, I think, from my end, it, it, what is the actual scope? Um, so how many documents you have out there? So how many pages up you build? And then glide and the you know the behind the smart sheet can be absolutely powerful writing all kinds of queries um so the question is how far you're going to get into that of hey can we do this can we do that you know usually as a as a conversation goes like oh i didn't know you can do that can also we do that those out of the slippery slope can sometimes happen in projects mm. that this is great but it wasn't in the scope so maybe that's something that could be added of like hey we can also build this thing for phase two if you yes. wanted to build some yeah. magic in it so i've built a glide app for the conference that actually my session is going to be on um giving a copy of the conference app and we're going to rebuild it together so they've got some some data to work with um and one thing that i've put in place there is a bit of code that if someone has bought a ticket for the uk day they will only see the uk related um content if they bought the three-day ticket they'll see all of that content um and it's a line of code because google sheets is so powerful um yeah. so you, you know the the more so she could have 
and, and I'm saying that this is a great solution. She hasn't gone into too much detail. You know, this is the early stages, but something like this, like you said, Joel, having those kind of gold, silver, bronze levels that you offer, you know, you could say, well, I could customize this for actual teams. So a manager might need to know some different policies than, or, or uh, the executives might need to know different policies. So I, this is a great solution as far as it's adaptable and um, expandable. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'd love to pull on, I think this is a big lesson for people, what Jolta said around the scope. Mm. and it was not clear how many policies some places have hundreds of policies some have mm. five you know so potentially the pricing could have been based on setting something up and yeah. one policy and then saying 10 policies will cost you this the next 11 to 50 will cost you this because they get easier over time but maybe considering i'm just thinking out loud at the moment considering that as a pricing op option because you weren't given enough information to know how many policies. And if you cap yourself at a fixed price because you haven't been very clear on your scope, you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. Mm. Because I know uh, companies that anything that com that happens in the business, they write another policy, right? <laughs> so if you've got... You know, the policy of how to use the policies. Um, that is exactly yeah. right. And then you've got some companies that just have their, you know, generic kind of policies. So, yeah, yeah you know, um, Fresh yeah. could be one of those pain in the ass companies that have got hundreds of them. So, <laughs> yeah, don't be fooled yeah. by friendly looking Bob. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the other thing that you could do is, uh, depending on what your relationship is, uh, you look for long term relationship and there's already trust build that sort of thing, saying that here's my estimate, but let's do a workshop one day. We clearly define what actually we need. I can mm -hmm. even bring the prototype you can play with. And then from there, we nail down the final price. So you need a little trust, obviously, because you pay for something that doesn't have an outcome and an output um, that they can use. But that can be so much better than just randomly throwing prices out sometimes. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out on this one as well, another non-conforming. We had two pages. We only asked for one. So consider that as you rate. Uh, <laughs> as you vote. But let's uh, let's get back on screen. Jolt, very, very brilliant insights that you've shared um, that we haven't had on the show just yet. Have you learned anything from this episode that you're going to take back to your work? Um, definitely. One is... Um that I always look for new ideas and new way of, of uh, solving problems. And just like, you know, the Eerling heroes have all these uh, challenges out there weekly, that is the best way to actually test yourself um, rather than reading about things or writing about things because that anybody can do, but actually building something, no matter what you build, Whatever you build, the worst thing you build is better than the nothing that you created that's beautiful and perfect. Mm -hmm. So something is always take away. And when you show yourself um, out there, you're going to get criticized. You're going to get, um, oh, it could be done this way or should have been that way. Don't listen to those things. Build better things every time that you build before. And that's all, I think. Um, but the Glide, um, I love the Glide on Zapier thing. I'm definitely going to play with it. And the, and the chatbots. Um, I love chatbots. There are, I think, two ways to build chatbots. One is just uh, basically just a query, and it doesn't really learn anything. The other one is the real AI. And those are the ones that's, that's powerful. So if that's what meant in that solution, then that was, I think, a, a great solution as well. So I, I'm glad that I don't have to choose between these. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking it's of choosing. It's a difficult one. Yeah. People at home, you, there's two episodes in the semifinal. Go watch them. They're only short. Um, look at everyone. Link is in the description of the video for you to vote who should go through to the final. You're now voting for the last two people that have battled it out through the rounds. So pay attention to the criteria, watch the videos, vote for who you think is the most deserving based on the brief. Um, get rid of your biases. But I'd like to thank our guest. Brilliant. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for coming from Fairy Tale Land. Uh,
<laughs> far, far away to be with us and for the insights that you've shared. They've been very valuable. Thank you, co-host Pat. Appreciate you. You know what? I just want to make it clear. I have never used this sound effect with anyone else. Not even oh. not even Nick Petch. And he's like oh. the most handsome man in Australia. Right? <laughs> and I did not even use I went and I found this sound effect and I put it on for you. <laughs> wow, I don't I don't even know what to say. Oh, that's so much means so much to me and probably gonna retire right here so no no one ever is gonna have this sound effect ever, ever. i hope my wife does not see this episode by the way she's gonna be so upset <laughs> okay well on that magical note thank you viewers at home thank you awesome people for thank submitting you. your submissions well done everyone very proud very grateful for all the effort thank you for watching share vote tell everyone you know about this if it adds value to your life Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye guys.